having the opportunity to share what Jesus does with us, like sitting down with us right now and being very real and being very sincere, you know, about, or I'm being very sincere about the reality of how God can meet you where you're at, as you are, where you are right now, and literally, He can suddenly appear or he can speak audibly to you and that he can choose to do through circumstance or through the study of the Word of God or through your daily reading of your Bible or through your fellowship of believers that you gather together in whether going to church or whether you're in a women's Bible study or a men's study throughout the week or whether it be that with your family or loved one that you get together and pray together that God can speak to you anywhere anytime he so chooses any way he wants to I love the way that sometimes God takes the reality of what I'm doing in a, a ministry right now like on the internet and writing and he takes <laughs> literally the words and like somehow confronts people in whatever setting they may be in and challenges them to look at what may be said and then throw it back the very words you know that that are written you know which is amazing to me because the word's written so you can look at it and you can say okay well this is this is what the word says you know it says love you know well how could love mean hate or how could love mean anything else but love and yet isn't it true that you and i as readers often mistake what the word might say what the intent might be what the feelings of the heart might not be saying through the words that we use because we might not understand each other you see that's why god sent his holy spirit because if we know underneath it all that god is love that all of his responses based upon the knowledge that god operates from love we can look at the entire old testament and the new testament and find it is complete though i'll admit right now in a 10 minute devotion it'll be kind of hard to explain to you how god is love and how he can wipe out the canaanites but i can <laughs> the, the point is god told me so it's like okay we can share that you know because it's written in the word but when you know that god is love then you can trust him with all of your heart when you know God is love, you can trust Him with all your soul. You can trust Him with your emotions. But if you don't know that God is love, then when you read His Word, sometimes you come up with this kind of distorted idea about, like, well, the God of the Old Testament, He didn't love people because He was kind of like, you know, wiping them out and killing them. But when you read Romans, it says, but they knew God. And they cared not for God and they chose to distort God and that they chose to change God into something God was not so they chose other gods hmm so if we read the volume of the book and we understand that by his Holy Spirit God can take our experience and put it in the book because we've been given grace which is like wow and mercy which is like love and then we know that God is love then we apply that to how we read things we see that oh now I get it this can be from a foundation of love wouldn't it be nice if you and I as Christians as those who follow Jesus could look at each other as though we were coming from a foundation of love hmm wouldn't it be nice if we could understand that because Jesus is in you and Jesus is in me and that he is working out our salvation because he's the remember the author and the finisher of our faith he's not the quote-unquote lack of participant in it but he finishes our faith it's not we causing ourselves to become more righteous or more faithful but rather he is involving us 
in our part to participate with him on his part to finish our faith and completely work us over and renew us and refresh us and reform us and conform us into his image that he is on the inside making us be revealed on the outside so that we become obviously like him to the world around us so when people sometimes slap me around on the internet I just smile and I, I keep writing LOL which is laughing out loud because I keep thinking me? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh come on <laughs> there may be the quality of intelligence that God has given me as far as using a word sometimes in the right way but sometimes the way that people read the words they may have a different realization until they read the volume of the work that maybe I've written at some point in time and then understand that oh well maybe maybe I didn't understand what he meant so if you find yourself like me at times misunderstood don't sweat it God was misunderstood all along look at Jesus <laughs> and the clue they had walking around here on earth Look at God the Father. He had to put up with all this interpretation of who he was when he said from the very beginning, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways my ways, and I'm so far above the heavens that the earth, you know, and blah, 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 that you can't even begin to understand it or comprehend. And yet they still try to. And so don't be surprised if your comprehension of God might be a little misunderstood or misunderstanding of him until you apply all of the word of God to who he is to what he is to how he is with you has he beaten you up lately no <laughs> he is not rewarded he has not rewarded us according to our sins but he has given us mercy and grace according to his love so you see god is love and he loves you <laughs> and he loves me god only knows why just because he's god and god is love i will make all my mountains away, Isaiah 49:11. Stream to the desert. God will make obstacles serve His purpose. We all have mountains in our lives. Tell me about it. There are people <laughs> and things that threaten to bar our progress in the divine life. Those heavy claims, that uncongenial occupation, that thorn in the flesh, that daily cross. We think that if only these were removed, we might live a pure, tender, holier lives, and often we pray for their removal. But why? Oh, fools and slow of heart. These are the very conditions of achievement. They have been put into your lives as the means to the very graces and virtues, the very attitudes and actions for which we've been praying that God would make us to be able to do for so long. Count it all joy when you fall into divers' trials and tribulations knowing that the working of your faith produces patience but let patience have her perfect work that the man of god might be complete lacking nothing oh so i need to kind of like you know look at my trials and tribulations in a different perspective look at the word from a different angle point of view from god's point of view Thou hast prayed for patience through long years, but there is something that tries thee beyond endurance. And thou hast fled from it, avoided it, accounted it unsurmountable obstacle to the desired attainment. And suppose that its removal would secure your immediate deliverance and victory. I conquer in the name of God. I declare in the name of the Lord that thou shalt be gone. <laughs> I don't think so. Not so. Thou wouldst gain only the cessation of the temptations, or the setting them aside, to impatience. But this would not be patience. Patience can be acquired only through just such trials as now seem so unbearable. Go back. Submit yourself. Let it happen. Claim to be a partaker in the patience of Jesus, and meet your trials in Him, not in yourself. Let Him work through you to you, about you, with what he's doing in you. There is nothing in life which harasses and annoys that may not become subservient to the better end. They are his mountains, not mine. He puts them there. We know that God will not fail to keep his promise. 
God understands the way thereof, and knows the place thereof, for he looks to the ends of the earth, and sees under the whole heaven. And when we come to the foot of the mountains, we shall find the way. The meaning of trial is not only to test worthiness, but to increase worthiness, as the oak is not only tested by the storms, but toughened by them. Like they always say, you can get bitter, or you can get better, <laughs> and the best is up to you. Because it's not a choice of making yourself react in a certain way, but it's just taking it with a grain of salt and saying, okay, Lord, will you make me as salt to be a preservative, salt as a binding element to keep fluids inside the body, salt as a taste, or will it just be salt to melt underneath our feet, the snow, and be trodden by man? Good question. What God is doing in you, for you, through you, and by you, is by, through, and about his circumstances that he allows to happen to you as you let him <laughs> change you and change the other person sometimes, but change you first into his image. Because, shoot, you know as well as I do, you're just as corrupt as I am, and any one of us, our righteousness is his filthy rags. So coming before God and just letting him do his work is just simply trusting him with all our heart, leaning not into our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging him and let him direct your path. After all, you're going to get tried and tested one way or another.